A few weeks ago, I told you at home about 24-year-old Daniel Robinson, a missing geologist who was last seen leaving a job site in Buckeye, Arizona, more than three months ago. It's a story that didn't get nearly as much attention as Gabby Petito. And in my last interview with Daniel's father, he told me that he noticed the disparity as well. But what's even more striking to him has been the response from the Buckeye Police Department. They hear silence from the police department whose uh, job is to do the things that we're doing is very devastating. What do you hope to get the police to do? Do their job. Do their simple as that. Do your job. Um, go find my son. Unfortunately, things have not gotten any better. At a press conference Sunday, Daniel's father again criticized Buckeye police for their lack of urgency regarding his son's disappearance. He said, quote, they would have stepped up to the plate in the beginning, I wouldn't be standing here now. Buckeye police say they pursued all leads and conducted several ground and aerial searches and that they still don't suspect foul play. But a private investigator hired by Daniel's family says he hasn't ruled out foul play. And he says he's found some pretty compelling evidence. But before we get to that, I want all of us to just sit with this all for a second. Just sit with it. Sometimes sitting in the discomfort is very important. Daniel's father has felt the need to lead this investigation, complete with drones, volunteers, cadaver dogs, and a private investigator he's paying for with his own money. And that's all because he doesn't believe the police department is taking the case of his son seriously, his missing black son. And joining me now is David Robinson, Daniel's father. Now also with us is Jeff McGrath, the family's private investigator. And I'm so grateful to you both for being here. David, I want to start with you. First of all, how are you doing since we last talked? Any updates you can share? Uh, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm still continuing on, um, you know, doing everything I can to um, bring my son home, um, try to find all the information I can. Um, and, and also make sure um, the search is continuing. Uh, this Saturday, I'm looking forward uh, to going back out there in the desert and, and do my part uh, with the volunteers and uh, you know uh, just be out there with, it, with them and make sure this, this get done. Jeff, you're, you're investigating this case um, on the family's behalf. They had to hire you because the police department didn't clearly did not uh, do a sufficient job here, uh, particularly in, in Mr. Robinson's view. They say they don't suspect foul play, in part because about a month after Daniel's disappearance, his car was found with clothes, his cell phone, and his wallet. Do you agree with that assessment? No, I do not. Uh, when, when they located the vehicle, that, that was the most evidence that you could gain in this case. Um, and the best evidence to deal with. What they did with it from that point on is the whole reason why I'm here, because uh, they were holding it in their hands and they didn't see that this is this vehicle didn't crash down in that ravine. It rolled down there and tipped on its side, but that's not where that vehicle was crashed. It was crashed somewhere else. Jeff, how can you tell that? What, it, what about the the photos or maybe the car if you've seen it uh led you to that conclusion well what led me to that is that that's that's my specialty um i'm an expert um, forensic accident investigator i'm an accident reconstructionist and in this case the vehicles got damage on the driver's side and the driver's side uh, door window is broken out but there's nothing in that area you can see there that the driver's side could have hit coming down to tip over onto its passenger side. Buckeye says that vehicle rolled down that ravine. It did not roll down the ravine. There's no roll evidence on this vehicle at all. I now have possession of the vehicle and I've conducted in-depth inspections on this vehicle. And I can tell you that when they got that vehicle and they brought it back to their department and they downloaded the airbag control module in that, it's a 32 page printout in that 32 page printout, it has some glaring issues that they just didn't see. Uh, some of those are mm. that there's, there's um, 46 additional uh, ignition cycles on that vehicle from the time that air, the airbags deployed in there. 
there's 11 additional miles on that vehicle from the time the airbags deployed. And the biggest thing that I see is that there's a five second countdown. It's a, it's, it's basically, it's leading up to airbag deployment when the box senses an event is happening, a crash is happening. It goes backwards, collects five seconds and stamps that in. And it gives us a printout on exactly what was going on with that vehicle five seconds prior to those airbags coming out. And that vehicle was doing 29, 30, 27, and 30 miles an hour again, consistently through the entire five seconds with approximately 50% of the uh, accelerator pushed, the, the gas pedal pushed, and no braking. Mm -hmm. you, there's, not, there's not enough room on that ridge uh, to run that vehicle for 30 sec or for five seconds at 30 miles an hour. And, and it just, we've tried it in other vehicles, it's not possible. Mm. And you know, all of that is, is incredibly compelling. When you brought this evidence to the police department, David, what was their reaction? Did they consider it seriously? Did, have, they, have you gotten any response from them whatsoever? Well, my investigator, Jeff, he uh, uh, presented it to the Buckeye Police Department. Um, all, I, all I know from that is um, that was the last day I heard from the Buckeye Police Department. Um, they usually would uh, accept my calls when I call to uh, um, you know, get updates on what or if they're doing anything. Uh, that's when the calls stop. Why do you think that they're avoiding your calls? Isn't it their job to find your son? It's definitely their job to find my son. Um, but you know, the kind of father I am, and you know, I love my children. Um, and uh, you know, I'm gonna make sure if, if I feel like there's a failure somewhere, then I have to do it myself, you know? Um, and you know, mm -hmm. it's been evident uh, from the beginning that uh, I couldn't rely on the Buckeye Police Department. I quickly found, figured that out. Uh, that's why I asked Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. McGrath to come on, and uh, that's the reason why I have the searches going. This is the reason why I'm reaching out to the to the uh, public uh, to make this thing uh, uh, national, so that way some eyes are everywhere. My reach can be everywhere. Somebody see my son, somebody know anything, uh, they could say something, call myself or call Mr. McGrath, and, um, and let us know what's going on. It's so important, um, the work that you're doing, Jeff. Um, and as you laid out the, the technical evidence, you know, I'm reminded of all of sort of my uh, te television watching, but it was so detailed there. And I hope that folks are listening at home and hopefully um, there will be a happy end to this story. David Robinson and Jeff McGrath, I, 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 what I'm, I'm grateful that you both were here tonight. Thank you again for joining me and please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.